Yeah, they're also, they're really suffering. They're suffering, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's all suffering. <laughs> Their place is more cold than Mayapur, I think. Oh. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Anyway, they're younger. <laughs> they can suffer more. <laughs> All right, so we'll begin. Yes, Guru. Can you share the screen with me? Okay, Om Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Nilitanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Nirvise Shasanyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patita Nam Pavan Evyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So today we are on Mantra 9 of the Shri Ishopanishad Oh, I will read the Sanskrit. Andantamaha pravishanti ye vidyam upasate tato buya ivate tamo ya o vidya yam rataha. Those who engage in the culture of nascent activities shall enter into the darkest region of ignorance. Worse still are those engaged in the culture of so-called knowledge. So Srila Prabhupada's purport, this mantra offers a comparative study of vidya and avidya. Avidya or ignorance is very dangerous, but vidya or knowledge is even more dangerous when not properly used. So Prabhupada explains that this mantra of Sri Ishopanishad is very applicable today more than in the past. So modern civilization has advanced in the field of so-called education. But the result of this advancement is that people are more unhappy than ever before. 
แต่ว่าผลของมันออกมาก็คือทําให้ผู้คนเนี่ยไม่มีความสุขมากกว่าแต่ก่อน People are unhappy because too much importance is put on material advancement. ผู้คนเนี่ยไม่มีความสุขเพราะว่าการพัฒนาทางวัตถุเนี่ยมันได้รับความสําคัญมากกว่า And nobody cares about the most important thing, which is the spiritual aspect of life. People only think about how to make money for their sense enjoyment. So it's important people should know about spiritual education. So Prabhupada refers to the first mantra of the Ishopanishad. In the first mantra, it was described that the Supreme Lord is the proprietor of everything. And if we don't remember that he's the proprietor, if we forget that he's the proprietor, that is ignorance. When people forget that the Supreme Lord is the proprietor, then people go into darkness. Ignorance is like darkness. So when the civilization is only interested in material education. With no spiritual education, it's more dangerous than a civilization where people are less educated, where people are not much educated. It's better people just remain simple and don't know much than to be educated into material life. If people have no consciousness of God, then it's very bad for civilization. So there are different classes of men. Some men are karmis, some men are jnanis, and some may be yogis. Of course, most of them are karmis. A small number are jnanis, and a few, even less number, are yogis. So the karmi tries to enjoy the material world. He wants sense gratification. And 99.9% of people are trying to get sense gratification. And people get sense gratification in different ways. Some, most people, they try for economic development, make more money. 
และการหาความสุขเนี่ยของแต่ละคนก็จะแตกต่างกันออกไปบางคนเนี่ยจะมองหาในส่วนของการพัฒนาทางเศรษฐกิจ Some people try to get into business and do industry, make an industry, make money that way. Some people try to get into politics. But all of these activities is just for sense gratification. They have no interest in God consciousness. So then, Prabhupada refers to Bhagavad Gita, and he explains in the Bhagavad Gita in the seventh chapter that people who are just interested in sense gratification are like donkeys, like mudhas or asses or donkeys. So the ass is a very stupid animal, and people who try to do business, people who are trying to uh, work just for sense gratification, they're just like asses. And if people help, if people help other people in this, sometimes people think this education will help you to make better life, to have a more successful life. So this is actually wrong. And if people think you need more education to enjoy life better, then these people are, are doing more harm to us. It's better to just let people just do sense gratification without education. People who have no consciousness of God, they're they're like the snake, which has a jewel on its head. Just like a cobra, it's a very poisonous snake, and sometimes the cobra has a jewel on its head. So if the snake has a jewel on its head, it's more dangerous than the snake which doesn't have a jewel on its head. So people are like that. They're like the snake. If people are educated without God consciousness, then they're like the snake with the jewel on the head. And they're also the people who are educated but no God consciousness. They're like the dead body which is decorated with nice ornaments, but the man is dead. So, in the today's world, people try to hide the miseries of material life. And 
And everything people do is for their sense gratification. They don't realize that higher than the senses is the mind, and higher than the mind is intelligence. And higher than intelligence is the soul. So the real purpose of education is to understand ourselves as a soul. And we should know what is the proper standard of behavior for a soul. So if any if people get education, but they don't get anything, any education about spiritual values, then it's useless. That education which doesn't teach about the soul, that's only teaching avidya, avidya, which is nations or ignorance. And, the, and when you cultivate that avidya, then you go into the darkest ignorance. So in the Bhagavad Gita, people who are, are not properly educated, who are only given material education, they're called, they're called, sometimes they're called Veda Vada Rata, or they're called Maya Aparita Jnana. But we could also just call them atheistic demons, the lowest of men. Some people, these people who say they are Veda Vadarata, they, they say they know the Vedas, but they don't know the real purpose behind the Vedas. The real purpose of the Vedas is to know Krishna. But these Veda Vadarata people, they're not interested in Krishna. They want to enjoy the material world. They would like to go to heaven. So then in Mantra 1, Mantra 1, we heard that the Supreme Lord is the proprietor of everything. And we learned we should be happy with whatever we get by nature's arrangement. We shouldn't try to be greedy to get more. And the real purpose of all the Vedas, and the Vedas is to help us to become God conscious. Hmm. 
So this is this purpose is this purpose of Vedas is to help us to re remember that we're not the body, that we're spiritual beings and we have a relationship with the Supreme Lord. The real purpose of all religion is to bring people back to Godhead. But the Vedavatarata people, they they only think about they, they they don't they don't think about their relationship with Krishna. They think their purpose is just to enjoy the material world. Yeah, they want to go to heaven because they know they will enjoy a long life there with a lot of luxury, a lot of sense gratification. So they think that is the goal of life. But the real purpose of the, the Vedas is to get us out of the material world, to go beyond birth and death. So, some of these people often they they, they they lead people the wrong way. They don't understand the real purpose of the Vedas and they teach them the wrong thing. And they even, these people, Vedavadarata people, they even criticize the Puranas and they say, oh, this is not the real Vedas, you should read the Vedas, this is not, the, the Puranas are not Vedas. And so these Ved Veda Vadarata people, they give their own meaning of the Vedas and they don't care about what the teachers, what the real Acharyas say. And they will bring one of their own people, they will claim one of their own men to be the Acharya. They'll, they'll say he is the real teacher of the Vedas. So this mantra is telling us that these people are very bad and you should be very careful to avoid them. So sometimes these people, they study the Vedas and they know the Veda is the source. The Vedas is the source of all knowledge. Veda means knowledge. So you get all knowledge from the Vedas. So 
But if people study the Vedas and they don't know the real purpose behind the Vedas, then it's no good. We should know what is the real purpose of the Vedas. And we have to know by following the message of the Acharyas. And if we, if we don't follow the Acharya, then you won't get a good result. And the Acharyas, they will, they will, they're very clever. They will take different words and they will put their own meanings into each of the words of the of the Vedas. Uh, yeah, they, 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 they call themselves Acharyas, they're not real Acharyas. They don't know the real purpose behind the Vedas, and they put their own purpose in the Vedas. They give their own message, they don't follow the Vedas. And they don't study the Vedas through the disciplic succession. And because they don't have any disciplic succession, so they can never know the real message behind the Vedas. If you want to study the Vedas and know the message of the Vedas, you have to have a bona fide spiritual master to teach you. So that is also stated in the Vedas, in the Mundaka Upanishad, it says you must have a guru. So these people, the Vedavada Ratas, they have their own Acharya and he's not in any disciplic succession. So be, be, because they don't follow the disciplic succession, so they go into ignorance. And they, they have no knowledge, they don't understand anything about the Vedas. So then the other class of people is called the Maya Aparita Jnana class of men. And they make themselves God. They claim they're gods. And they think there's no need of worshipping any other god. That I, they think I'm myself god, you just worship me. And they will worship an ordinary man if he's very rich. But they never want to worship Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
แต่ว่าเขาเนี่ยจะไม่ได้บูชาคริสต์นาบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดแห่งพระเจ้า So these people are very foolish. They, they, they never think that if they're actually God, how is it they're in Maya? It would mean Maya is greater than God. It means that God got trapped by His own energy. His own energy is Maya, and God is under the control of His own Maya. So Maya is more powerful than God. And so that's that's stupid. That's foolish to say like that. They are, but then at the same time they say God is all powerful. If you ask them, is God all powerful? They say, Oh yes, God is all powerful. He's all powerful. Then why did he get conquered by Maya? Why did he get defeated by Maya? So these people, they cannot answer any of our questions. They're just happy thinking I'm God. Don't disturb me. <laughs> They're so unfortunate, foolish people. Okay, we're going ahead to mantra ten. Anyad evahar vidya ya, nanyad ahur avidya ya, iti sushrumadhiranam, yena stadvichak chakshare. The wise have explained that one result is derived from the culture of knowledge, and that a different result is obtained from the culture of nations. บทมนที่สิบคำแปลผู้มีปัญญาได้อธิบายว่าคนลับหนึ่งได้มาจากการพัฒนาความรู้และอีกคนลับหนึ่งได้มาจากการพัฒนาอาวิชา One you culture knowledge you get one result and you culture nations you get a different result ดังตรงนี้บอกถึงผู้มีปัญญาว่าได้อธิบายไว้ว่าถ้าเกิดเราพัฒนาความรู้เนี่ยเราจะได้รับผลลัพธ์ประเภทหนึ่งแล้วถ้าเกิดเราพัฒนาอาวิชาเนี่ยเราจะได้รับผลลัพธ์อีกประเภท So how should we culture knowledge? How should we culture knowledge? This is told in the Bhagavad Gita. แล้วเราเนี่ยจะพัฒนาความรู้ได้อย่างไรตรงนี้ได้บอกไว้ในหนังสือพระคัมภีร์กิตา In the thirteenth chapter, if we go to text number eight and then nine, ten, eleven, twelve, we get all the different Ways in which we can cultivate knowledge. So the very first one, we'll go through the different items. The first one, one should become a perfect gentleman and learn to give proper respect to others. This means we have to be humble and we have to give up false pride. It's the, the real sign of knowledge and education is a person will be humble. 
หรือว่าการศึกษาที่ดีจริงๆเนี่ยเขาจะต้องสอนให้บุคคลเนี่ยมีความอ่อนน้อมถ่อมตน And he will get, he will show proper respect to others, and he'll have good manners. So Prabhupada was one time on television in America, and he was interviewed. So the man asked him, he asked Prabhupada, he said, "How would we recognize a devotee of Krishna?" So Prabhupada said, "Oh, he would be a perfect gentleman. He would have very nice manners, good qualities." So this is this is mentioned here. We should become a perfect gen. This is the first item of culture of knowledge. We often see people who get education. If they go to a, a university or a college, they get education, but they, they they don't learn to be good people. They're not very polite. They're not well mannered. And they don't give proper respect to others. But Lord Chaitanya said in the Shikshastika, he said, we should offer all respect to others, and we should not be anxious to get respect ourselves. Right, that's the third verse of the Shikshastika. Trinadapi sunichain atarorapi sahishnuna amanena manhadena kirtaniya sadahari. We should chant the holy name in a humble state of mind. We should be lower than the straw in the street. We should be devoid of all false prestige, and offer all respects to others. In such a state of mind, we can chant the holy name constantly. <laughs> เราเนี่ยควรที่จะมีความเนี่ยจิตใจของเราเนี่ยควรที่จะอยู่ในระดับแห่งความอ่อนน้อมถ่อมตนโดยปราศจากความเมียโสโอหังทั้งหลายแล้วก็คิดว่าตนเองเนี่ยต่ำกว่าใบหญ้าบนถนนแล้วก็ให้เราเนี่ยพัฒนาความอดทนเหมือนกับต้นไม้ Krishna Das Kaviraj wrote the Chaitanya Charitamrita And he's, he has written in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that that third verse of Shikshastikam should be put on a thread and it should be worn around our neck for constant remembrance. Uh, uh, People are not taught today to respect others. They're very proud, or very arrogant. They don't like to bow down to others. Uh, 
ให้แสดงความเคารพต่อคุณหรือว่าให้มีความอ่อนน้อมถ่อมตนให้ว่าให้กลมลงพระจะไม่ได้รับกัน People think it's a weakness if you bow down to others. They think you're weak or humble. You're, you're, they think you're foolish. So. We have to understand humility is a good quality. And it's it's a sign that one is out, one is cultured and educated, that he can behave properly and he can give respect to others. So therefore, just like when you want to get a spiritual master, we learn to bow down before the spiritual master. So people, some people coming from material world, they're surprised. When they see people bow down to another person, but we should understand that we're being trained to to be respectful to the teacher. And the teacher, he bowed down to his spiritual master and he worshipped his spiritual master. So he's not asking you to do anything which he didn't do himself. So the first item in education and knowledge is to be humble and to give up pride. Pride comes about because we think I'm the body. We don't understand I'm a soul. We're thinking I'm the body. So, uh, when we become proud, then it's a type of intoxication, and that is against the religious principles. We learn as devotees, we often sit down, we sit on the floor and we bow down to others, we bow down when we come in the temple, so we're taught to cultivate humility. We should remember the spirit soul is very small. The spirit soul is one ten thousand of the tip of a hair. Uh, 
มาหั่นเป็นหนึ่งพันครั้งเนี่ยอันจะเท่ากับดวงเนี่ย So we sh we should have the ego. Our ego should be in proportion to the size of our soul. เพราะฉะนั้นอหังการที่เรามีเนี่ยมันก็ควรที่จะดูเกี่ยวกับดูขนาดของดวงวิญญาณเราด้วย The ego is very the, the soul is very small, so our ego should be very 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 small. ถ้าเกิดว่าเราดวงวิญญาณเราเนี่ยมีขนาดเล็กขนาดนั้นแล้วเนี่ยความอหังการของเราก็ควรที่จะเล็กตามเล็กไปตามขนาดของดวงวิญญาณด้วยเช่นกัน And if we are humble, and then we will chant the holy name more. That will help us to be humble. We should always remember that I am not the body. I am a spirit soul, and the spirit soul is a tiny part of the supreme Lord. เราจะต้องจำไว้เสมอว่าเราเนี่ยไม่ใช่ร่างกายนี้เราเนี่ยเป็นดวงวิญญาณและดวงวิญญาณก็เป็นก็เป็นเศษล้อมอนุที่มาจากองค์พระคาวา All right, then the second quality for education for culture, the second thing is one should not pose himself as a religionist simply for name and fame. ข้อที่สองเนี่ยได้บอกไว้ว่าไม่ควรอวดอ้างตนเองว่าเป็นนักศาสนาเพียงเพื่อเกียรติยศชื่อเสียง So again it's the same thing that if if we're thinking more about our name and fame this is material and this will make us very proud อันนี้เนี่ยถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยคิดว่าการปฏิบัติเนี่ยมันเป็นมันทำไปเพื่อที่จะเกียรติยศชื่อเสียงอย่างเดียวเนี่ยอันนี้มันก็จะนำไปสู่ความมังกรอีก If we if we if we think I'm a very religious person and we want everyone to see I'm a very religious person เราก็เราก็จะอยากให้ทุกคนเห็นว่าเออฉันน่าเป็นนักศาสนามากอยากให้ทุกคนเห็นถึงความเคร่งศาสนาของตัวเอง And sometimes people will do things to show the how religious they are. They will keep many deities in the home. And they keep many holy books in their home. Right, and they will also uh, they'll have many pictures of God everywhere, and they'll be blowing the conch shell and ringing the bells, and they want everybody to know I'm a very religious person. แล้วเขาจะมีการสั่นกันดิ่งจะมีการติดรูปพระไว้ที่บ้านเยอะแยะมากมายเพื่อบ่งบอกให้ผู้คนรู้ว่าเขาเนี่ยเป็นคนที่ชอบเรื่องศาสนาหรือว่าเคร่งในศาสนา So we shouldn't make a show of being a religious person. We should keep it confidential. เพราะเราไม่ควรที่จะโชว์หรือว่าแสดงว่าตัวเองเนี่ยเป็นคนเคร่งศาสนาหรืออะไรอันนี้เนี่ยมันเป็นสิ่งที่เราควรที่จะเก็บไว้ Of course, just like somebody may be a brahmachari or like that. Then they they can show that they're they're going to temple, that they're religious people, but they don't do it just to get recognition, just to get fame. ก็คือแต่ถ้าเกิดเราบุคคลเป็นบรมจารีหรือว่าอะไรเงี้ยแบบก็สามารถบอกได้ว่าตัวเองไปวัดอยู่นะหรือว่าอะไรเงี้ยแต่ว่าไม่ควรที่จะทําไปเพื่อชื่อเสียงของตัวเองเท่านั้น But the Buddha is not worried about his name and fame. He's only worried about service to Krishna. He wants service to Krishna. And a devotee will offer respect to others. He doesn't want people to worship him. 
he will worship other people. The devotee is not thinking about his own position. He wants to worship Krishna and gives all respect to the Supreme Lord. And he will make friends with the devotees. He doesn't, he doesn't try to cheat the people. All right, number three. One should not become a source of anxiety to others by the actions of the body, by the thoughts of the mind, or by his words. So devotees want to be very careful in dealing with other people. They don't want to cause anxiety to people. Of course, this world, this material world, there's, there's always a lot of anxiety in the material world. A devotee wants to go to Vaikuntha to get away from all the anxiety. So material world is anxiety, there's a, but there's always anxiety. We don't want to make more anxiety for people. We want to help people to get free of anxiety. So there are different ways in which we may make anxiety for people. We may do it with our body, we may do it with our mind, we may do it by words. So we have to be very careful. Don't not disturb anybody. Don't make any trouble for anybody. Live peacefully, chant the holy name, and remember Krishna. Don't get involved in any arguments or politics or problem dealings with people. We want to live peacefully. So be careful what we say to people. Well, often, sometimes we will say words which are not very nice to people and it can create a lot of problems. And we may cause the anxiety for people by what we do with our body. We may push them or shove them. We may some, do something, step on their foot or something. We cause them some anxiety. Then 
We have to be very careful how we deal with other people. And you have to be careful also what we think in the mind. Of course, what we think in the mind, that is subtle, that is not physical, that's not gross, it's subtle, but it's in the mind, and it, from the mind it may become the action, we may do it with the body. We have the material body and the, and the body is controlled by the mind. The thoughts come in the mind and the mind directs the body to do things. So we have to be careful what we think. So I always try to be thinking about others and do good to others and keep nice relationships with others. Then number four, we should learn forbearance even in the face of provocation from others. So someone may do harm to us and they may say bad things about us and they may cause us a lot of problems. We should just tolerate. Don't worry about it. Just tolerate. Krishna will adjust. If it's not right, if they've done something wrong, Krishna will protect us. So it's better just to be tolerant and to let people do their thing. Don't worry about them. If somebody does harm to us, then we just, we just tolerate it. We don't worry about it. We don't try to get revenge. If, if we try to get revenge, then it's like, you know, like there's a saying, we say an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So if somebody takes an eye from you, if you take out your eye, and you say, I'm going to take out their eye. And so then we'll end up, one day the, nobody will have any eyes. Everybody will be blind. And somebody, somebody may knock out our teeth. So we say, I'm going to knock out their teeth. And you knock out their teeth and then they come back and knock out more teeth and we end up, nobody's got any teeth. So we should be tolerant. How tolerant? We should be tolerant like the tree. So we should be tolerant like the tree. 
Just like we see the tree it tolerates the heat and the cold and the wind and the rain and it gives shelter to people. And the tree may even give fruit and flowers. And, and people come and cut the tree, but the tree tolerates. So we should be very tolerant like that, just like the tree. All right, so we'll stop there today. Um, are there any questions? Yes, Gurmara Sarat Purnima Maharaji have a question. Okay, Sarat Purnima Maharaji. Hare Krishna Gurmara. Hare บางครั้งจะเป็นแบบนี้เราจะเห็นได้ว่าแกย่อๆนะครับ 2-3 อ่าว่าอะไรก็ใช่มั้ยเค้าก็ว่าเค้ากลับอย่างแบบว่าทําร้ายกันเหมือนกันแต่ว่าฟังถ้าหากว่าอีกฟังหนึ่งซีเนีย
So there are two two devotees. Okay. Uh, two devotees they are fighting. So in this fight, both of them are like uh, the other side was like, okay, it's better that I I should not associate with because when I associate, I don't feel good. So the other side and try to point out that can devote he is a devotee the person is a devotee how can a devotee behave like this how can he be a devotee and do like this uh, they being point out all that even though the person is also devotee they also doing the same but they don't know their mistake they being point out the other side mistake only and they being saying that okay i don't want to associate with because it make me down so in this case how can she advise that devotee or what should uh, she tell them to to avoid association or what, what should what the person is doing harm to them uh, like uh, uh, argument they have a ag argument like the uh different not same thought like different opinions the opinions doesn't match mm. that cause the problem well <laughs> you know we're devotees we should try to get along with each other but if you have difficulty you you're you're like not agreeing with somebody and then you just have to be polite with them, but at the same time, you are, you're careful not to get into a heated discussion. You don't want to argue. Everybody's entitled to have their own opinion. But you don't want to get into a big discussion about it and a big argument and fight about it. We just want to be, we should, we should be humble, we should try to develop humility, you know, and that means that we have to tolerate that people will be different, they have different ideas. The Christ, you, you should think Krishna is giving you a test. He's training you to become tolerant. Maybe you offended them in your past life. You don't know what happened, why it's like, why you have liked it. But we should learn to be humble and tolerate, and you could you could even offer respects to them, or. At least in your mind, you offer respect to them and you stay away, you don't go near them, you keep a, a distance because you don't have a good control over your mind and over your words. And you can even apologize to them and tell them, I'm very sorry that I'm very attached to my thoughts and I know I'm not always right. And ask them to tolerate your temper or your anger. <laughs> and tell them you're trying to improve and you, you want to become a better 
devotee, you want to become more humble. It's important. This is Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga means the age of quarrel. Even little things, we get in a big argument, you make a big issue out of it and quarrel about something. It's just a small thing, but we make it a very big issue. It's just a small problem, but we make it like a big mountain. So we have to learn to not let Kali. Kali comes to make us quarrel with each other. It's very bad. You're devotees, you're both devotees, but you're arguing that's Kali influencing you, causing you to quarrel. So you have to become more humble, you have to become more tolerant. You have to learn to offer respect to others. You understand? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. We have to always remember Lord Chaitanya's teaching. Trinada peace and each atarora peace ahishnuna. Be tolerant like the tree and offer all respects to others. Don't be eager to get respect for yourself. Don't let Kali get in to your midst and ruin your relationships with the devotees. Don't be anxious to be respected, but rather offer respect to others. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, thank you for asking question. Okay, good. Next question from Shaya Mata. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Dhanavad Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances. Okori to Sila Bhagavan. Um, I need your suggestion about how to control my to avoid my uh, trap us. Guru Maharaj. Maya, trap you? Um, yes, because um, nowadays Maya is so strong. So uh, even we practice um, so serious and um, chanting 16 rounds every day, but Maya need to trap us. Then I need your suggestion about how to control Maya about that. How to control Maya? Well, you have to remember, first of all, nothing belongs to you. Everything belongs to Krishna. 
อันดับแรกนะคะต้องคิดก่อนว่าไม่มีอะไรเนี่ยขึ้นอยู่กับเราทุกอย่างเนี่ยขึ้นอยู่กับ Krishna Krishna is the proprietor and Krishna is the enjoyer everything is for his enjoyment ทุกอย่างเนี่ยมันมีหมายไว้เพื่อให้เพื่อให้ Krishna เนี่ยทรงพึงพอพระทัย And Krishna is the best friend. So we should remember these things. It will help us to conquer Maya. Maya comes because we forget Krishna. Where there is Krishna, there is no Maya. So because you forget Krishna, you get in Maya. You you want to enjoy Maya. You want to enjoy the material world without Krishna. If you want to get free of Maya, you have to remember Krishna. As soon as you take shelter of Krishna, all the Maya will go away. So taking shelter of Krishna, it means you have to chant the holy name, and you have to worship Krishna, and you have to bow down to Krishna. So, Maya is Krishna's energy. It's under the control of Krishna. So, if we surrender to Krishna, then we will conquer Maya. It's not very difficult. You just have to chant, call out to Krishna, chant the holy name loudly, or go on, go on Sankirtan, and go out in the streets and chant the holy name. By Sankirtan, by the are you going on Sankirtan? Are you doing any Sankirtan? Shaya? Oh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, sometimes in temple and um, join the program, Guru Maharaj. Sometimes in the temple, what? Um, because I, I didn't go to temple every day, Guru Maharaj, maybe once a week. Oh, okay. She go with her mother, I think. That's a, which, temple do, always... which temple do you go to? A Bangkok, Guru Maharaj. Bangkok, oh. Yes. <laughs> Can you understand when they give class? Um, I have um one Nepali devotee. Uh, I respect her like um, we love as a uh, sister in spiritual. Um, her name is Janavi. Janavi can translate Thai, but um, uh, uh but uh, she not really understand much. But sometimes um, uh, I translate in English word or some uh, Sanskrit word. But I. I am trying to understand that, Guru Maharaj, every class. You try to understand Nepali? Yes. <laughs> and oh. if sometimes Sarapunima went to the temple, then I, I let her to translate Guru Maharaj. Who? Sarapunima. Oh, Sarapunima translate for you? Yes. <laughs> oh, good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you only go once a week. Um, yes, if possible, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Not every week. Um, maybe 
um i mean if if possible about 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 my mom also mm -hmm. i'm and i'm trying to to go to the temple every week mm -hmm. okay. at least sunday every joy sunday yes. sunday mm -hmm. night um now it's not not night program Kumaras, just um daytime oh. mangarabi and um, morning darshan oh, okay. and prasadam in the morning yes that that just finished and um some program about um last new year program have but not much devoted mm. okay yes i follow to to join well going to temple is good to help you get out of maya yes and if you go to temple that will help you to remember krishna and to get out of maya when you go to temple you'll see everybody devotee chanting and krishna consciousness so that's the advantage of going to the temple that is you get free of maya Yes, but um, some devotee and um, about uh, begin, I mean new beginner about Thai, um, Thai people asking me about oh how to I avoid about passion mode something like that. Then um, I need your suggestion also. Then I I can write the content about that. Okay. How to avoid my so yes, we tell people. You have to become Krishna conscious, you have to become devotee, you have to chant Hare Krishna. Chanting is the first thing, the best thing, the loud chanting of the holy name. You chant Hare Krishna, chant the Maha Mantra loudly. If you call out to Krishna, Krishna will hear you. He will take away all the maya. So when you're in distress, we call Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Like that, when you call, and then you can forget all about the Maya. You overcome the Maya. Maya goes away when we chant Hare Krishna. There's no Maya. So loud chanting, we call to Krishna and we also pray to Krishna. I have to take shelter of Krishna. We pray to Krishna and we ask Krishna, save me. We can chant, Krishna, 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 Rakshama. Krishna, 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 Pahimam. <laughs> like that, we pray to Krishna to save us and to protect us. We need protection from Maya. So we ask Krishna, please protect me, please save me from Maya. Krishna is very kind. He's everywhere. He can see everything. He knows everything. So he will help us. He will come immediately. We call him. We have to, we have to ask him. We have to approach Krishna. If you need help, Krishna is there. But actually, we should want to give service to Krishna. Krishna is already doing so many nice things for us. He's taking care of us, he's protecting us, he's looking after us. We have to think how to serve Krishna. What can I do for Krishna? So when you cook, we offer our food to Krishna. When you cook, do you offer your food to Krishna, Shaya? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Um... Every day for cooking boka for um, Krishna. Do you cook for your mother? Yes, uh, but I offered uh, Krishna before. Uh huh. Good. So how do you offer? What do you say? Um, I, um, I cook about maybe Chinese subject and. No, but how um, do you how do you pray? What prayers do you say to offer the food? Oh, I have mantra about Ram Lakshman Prabhu mentioned in um, little uh, Maha Mantra books, Guru Maharaj. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Yes, I follow him. Yes. Yeah, from the book. Yeah, the Maha Mantra book. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Very good. Yeah. 
So we just have to pray to Krishna, we want to get out of Maya, we chant the holy name and you can read the Bhagavad Gita, you can tell people read the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita will give them knowledge, read the Krishna book, read a story about Krishna, it will help us to overcome the Maya. They can also read Ishopanishad, we are reading Upanishads, they can read that book also, Upanishad. Very good, so much knowledge. They can learn how to get free of Maya. Hmm? You Thank understand? You I always asking uh, mercy from Krishna. Are you? Um, You're always asking mercy. Uh, yes, I always asking mercy from from Krishna. What mercy? Me. What mercy you want? Mercy about um, let me free from sinful and um, doing seva more and more, doing devotional service. That's yes. good. Yes, you mm. should be. That's good. You should get free from all the bad habits. No bad habits, right? Yes. That's I I asking protection from from Krishna to pre protect protect me from uh, the bad things. Mm -hmm. Good. Very good. Yes. All right. So Krishna will hear your prayers. He will help you. He will protect you. Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. And I I asking your mercy also. <laughs> Yes, okay. I, we will give you mercy. I will ask Krishna to protect you, to help you, save you from Maya. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, so for your blessing. All right, so no more questions, Archana? Yes, Guru Maharaj, no more. Okay, so thank Archana very much for translation and thank okay. all the devotees for their questions. And we'll, I hope you have a nice weekend and we'll see you on Monday. So please take care. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki. Yeah. Go back to Vrinda ki.